Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here, and uh, thank you, Zabex, for the opportunity to uh, do another meetup like this. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how to partition a Zabex MySQL database and why you should partition a Zabex MySQL database. But first, let me introduce myself. So, my name is Nathan Lifting. Uh, I'm an IT engineer and Zabbix trainer at Open Source ICT Solutions. I've been working with Zabbix for more than six years now. And before going full time Zabbix engineer at the company I'm at now, I was a network engineer. Besides IT stuff, uh, I also love going out, uh, doing some wild camping. Uh, I'm also a photographer for my own brand, La Corba. So let me show you what I've in stock for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about why you would partition the database. Uh, I'm going to explain to you why we are going to partition the database. Then we'll talk about how to actually partition the database, practically partition the database into chunks. Third and fourth, we'll talk about how to manage the database partitions, uh, either with a Perl script or stored procedures. Lastly, uh, we'll do a little wrap up, see what we've done today, and then there will be some time for questions. So our first subject, why would you partition the database? Well, there is one clear big reason why you need to do this using MySQL database with Savix. The Savix housekeeper built-in process uh, can't keep up uh, after a certain database size. Zabbix Housekeeper uh, just doesn't work well with bigger databases, and this is because the Zabbix Housekeeper process looks looks at the timestamp of your history and trends stored in the Zabbix database and deletes these line by line. So if you are pulling an item in Zabbix, Zabbix will save the pulled data in the database with the timestamp, and once that timestamp becomes too old, According to our front end housekeeper configuration, the housekeeper finds the line and drops it from the database. If you have a running Zabbix server with an unpartitioned database, there's a clear indicator in the Zabbix front end uh, when it can't keep up anymore. We can see in this graph uh, the orange line at the top is at 100%, which is our Zabbix uh, busy housekeeper process line. So once you see that the housekeeper is just trying to delete all those lines at, uh, and it's always at 100%, you can try to do some tweaks, but at one point uh, you will reach a point where uh, even tweaks can't, uh, can't save you anymore. You're just gonna have to partition the MySQL database. Now, if you are looking at that graph and you see that you are running into this issue, you are already a little bit on the late side from an architectural standpoint, that is. When you are setting up your Zabbix server, there's a lot of things uh, you need to keep in mind. You need to um, think about the number of proxies you will need. You will uh, need to think about uh, if you want to split up the MySQL database from the Zabbix server, or you even want to split up the Zabbix frontend. But when thinking about all of these architectural decisions, you need to also take uh, the will I partition my database question in mind. This should be a question you need to ask yourself every single Zabbix server you set up using a MySQL database. Do you expect the server to grow? Partition that database. Are you just building a proof of, con uh, proof of concept that might turn into a production server? Partition that database. The procedure is just a lot easier on a clean database so anytime you set up a Zabbix server, keep the partitioning or no partitioning choice in mind. Make the decision to partition based on current information and do it beforehand. Do it, doing it in an active environment is a lot of extra work with some extra risks. So just be smart about that decision. Partitioning a, uh, partitioning a big running database, it's not a fun job, but definitely possible and most certainly necessary once you reach the Zabbix Housekeeper bottleneck. Now, for the actual partition, we'll go over each step of the partition process, and I'll explain uh, to you why we have to do 
those steps. First, we are going to do some preparation. Before I do my partitioning, I like to open up a text editor and prepare all of my commands. So make sure to do that before executing any of the commands that we'll go over in the next slides. Also important, you will need to stop your Xamarin Server process if you are uh, on an active database or an active server. So if you have a large database, uh, partitioning can take a long time. So it might be a great idea to import a backup of your database onto a different MySQL server. So you can do the partitioning there and then import the partition database back into your uh, Zabbix production database uh, later on. This is a better way of doing it than uh, stopping your server and uh, partitioning on the running database because th this way you can make sure that you can keep your Zabbix server running for alerting and stuff like that. Besides that, always make sure that you have a backup of the database before partitioning the database. There's always a risk of losing data when you are doing stuff like this. Make sure to install Screen to your MySQL server, the, the one that you are going to use to execute the partitioning commands. So a screen will make sure to uh, keep your session active. And uh, if, even if the SSH session breaks off, screen uh, will make sure that the command keeps running in the background. So make sure to use that command. If you are on a brand new empty Zabbix server though, you don't have to worry about exporting, importing, backing up, or uh, setting up the screen stuff. If it's a completely empty database, uh, it's quite an easy process. You don't have to wait long. You can just go through it. And if something goes wrong, you can always set up a, a new database because there's no information in it yet. So a Zabbix database uses the tables in uh, the graph here to store its history and trend data. You can see the history tables uh, and the trend tables. And we will use different partitioning setups for the history and for the trend tables. So keep that in mind while we are going through the next slides. History tables will be partitioned by day and trends tables will be partitioned by month. So to prepare the commands, we will need to retrieve a timestamp from our current MySQL database tables. This is to make sure that the oldest data and the latest data both will have a partition uh, so that data is in that partition. Retrieve the timestamp with the following command. For each of the tables, uh, we are going to partition. So we just went over all of them. And you will get a date back for each of those tables. Write this down in your notepad, and we are going to use those to uh, prepare the commands later on. With that date, we can now prepare our partitioning commands. So for our history tables, uh, we will need to create a partition for every single day, starting on the day that we retrieved with the command we did in the previous slide. As you can see, uh, the partition, the first partition is going to be uh, for our oldest data from the command we retrieved, and the latest partition will be of the date it is today or even uh, some days later. You can always create a few more partitions for older days or even days into the future, as these partitions uh, will either be used or delete later automatically uh, with the Perl or store procedures. The complete command will look like this, with, of course, a partition per day. And where the three dots are uh, should be more partitions. So make sure to edit this command by replacing the history uh, underscore uint with every of the other history tables. Then for our trend tables, it will be a bit different, but uh, kind of the same. We will create a partition for each month instead of each day. Starting at the month we retrieved with the command and ending at the month we are in today. 
to mistake here, we can also create a few more partitions for older months or for months in the future, as these partitions will also be used or deleted, uh, deleted later automatically. The complete command will then look like this. Uh, and also make sure that you prepare this command for both the trends underscore uint table and the trends table. So now that you now that you have prepared all of your commands for every single table, you will have seven prepared commands. Uh, you have these in your notepad. You can now open up a screen. You can log into your MySQL database and uh, switch to the Zabbix, uh, Zabbix database. And you can then execute the command per table. Now make sure you are patient. This command will take a long time to execute on the bigger databases. So mm -hmm. just let it go until the entire process is done and then move on to the next table, going through all seven of them until you've reached the end. So once you are done partitioning every single table, uh, then and only then are you ready to set up the partition management Perl script. For your convenience, we've uploaded Perl script to our company GitHub. Uh, I just want to note that we didn't create this Perl script ourselves, uh, but at the moment we have no idea who did and we want to make sure that it's widely available. So as you cannot find the original guide and script anymore, feel free to use our GitHub and submit any changes you might want to include to the script for uh, future improvements. So after you've downloaded the script from our GitHub, simply save it to user share Zabbix and uh, make sure to make it executable. Oh. Accidentally click the link. So once you uh, download the script, open up the file with your favorite text editor, uh, like Finn, and first add your MySQL uh, user credentials and uh, where your MySQL uh, soc socket is located. For example, you can use the same, the same credentials that you've included in your Zabbix configuration file. And then you will move on to the part where it says my tables. It has an entry for every single table, so the history tables and the trends tables. Keep in mind the value for the history tables is in days, so 60 days, and the value for trends is in months. The default history is uh, the default retention for history tables uh, we've set at 60 days, and for trends we've set it to 12 months. Next, make sure to set the correct time zone. Uh, so make sure that this matches your Zabbix PHP time zone and your uh, Linux server time zone. And then you are done editing the script if you are using MySQL 5.6 or newer. If you are on an earlier MySQL version, like 5.5 or earlier, you also have to make sure to uh, uncomment or comment the following lines and uncomment these lines as well. This will change how the scripts, uh, script works and uh, it will make sure that it's compatible with the right MySQL version. To run the script, we'll also need to install some Perl modules. So we'll uh, use uh, yum or apt-get or dnf to install these. Um, we need the Perl date time and the Perl syslog modules. So install those. Then we are going to add a cron job with uh, cron tab minus e, and we'll make sure to add the following line so that our script is now executed every night. This will make sure that uh, this pro script is executed and it automatically takes care of deleting and creating the partitions according to what we just configured in the my tables part. We can now execute the script manually with the Perl and the script command. Uh, and this is going to delete all data and create the new partitions. 
And of course, we can check if everything ran successfully with the command shown here. Partition deleted and or created. And then you are done. Congratulations, your database is partitioned and will now remain so. Now, we can also use uh, stored procedures to do this. So stored procedures can definitely be used to maintain the partitions of your Zabbix database instead of the Perl script. But at the moment, I wouldn't recommend uh, using it unless you have uh, very good MySQL knowledge to your disposal. Stored procedures can be very hard to troubleshoot. It can be uh, more complicated to set up, and uh, they are set up within your database. So if you can't avoid them, for example, because your organization doesn't allow external scripts, then we've included a guide to do this in the blog post that comes with this presentation. So keep that in mind. It's definitely uh, something you can use, but I would recommend the Perl script instead of the stored procedures. So to wrap things up, you've partitioned your database, you've set up a script or stored procedures to manage the partitions, and you are now ready to use your Zabbix server again. Keep in mind, make sure to take a database uh, to take database partitioning up in your Zabbix server design before you deploy it. Avoid partitioning large databases as it's just a lot more complicated to do. It will take a lot of time. Prepare all of your commands before actually executing the commands. And uh, once you execute the commands, execute them in uh, that screen that we talked about. And after you're all done, Keep an eye on your partitions to make sure they are created every day for some data of that day. For a complete text guide that includes the MySQL stored procedures guide, check out the Zabbix blog post that was published yesterday for a complete textual guide. Now, if you are looking for more content like this, uh, join the future meetups, webinars, and of course the summit. Uh, we will continue writing blog posts on the Zabbix blogs. And if you are interested in a complete Zabbix guide containing the most important Zabbix subjects, check out our book on Amazon. Thank you all for your attention. And uh, are there any questions? Hello. And uh, yeah, thank you, Nathan. Um, there are some questions. So uh, first question, I'm just going to read it as it's written. So if partitioning is used, then settings in Perl script, will they overwrite the housekeeper settings? Or do we have to do something else with housekeeping settings? Yeah, good question. So uh, we have to uh, disable the Zabbix housekeeper uh, for the history and trends, and it will be overwritten by your Perl script settings or your stored procedure settings. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So don't forget to disable housekeeping for your partition tables in administration, general housekeeping. Yes. Um, uh, you said avoid partitioning large databases because it could take like a really long while and it's complex. So how large is large and how long is long? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, always a good, uh, that's always a good question. And uh, I didn't uh, mention any specifics because it can uh, differ between uh, setups. It depends on your hardware. It depends on the database size. Uh, I've uh, seen it take uh, like three, four days for a history table in a database that was like 400 gigs in total size. So yeah, definitely you can take a few days even, but it all depends on your hardware. It all depends on the database size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Because uh, 400 gigs isn't really that large. I mean, you're probably aware there are instances that are terabytes in size, right? So uh, this isn't even that crazy. Definitely, but yeah, I guess I guess I guess the point to take home here is yeah, it depends very much on the hardware and uh, yeah, the resources that are available for you. Um, yes, thank you a lot, Nathan, um, and I hope to see you soon in some of our other events. Thank you. <laughs>